Hello again, everybody. It's DDP back with another Dallas Prospect video here. Today, I am circling back around and taking a little bit of a closer look at Josh Green. Now, you might have seen my previous video on Josh Green. I had some time to, to delve into it a little bit, but really not as much as I would have liked. So this is just me circling around and getting, getting a little more in depth with it. So first, a little bit of recent Josh Green news just in the last day or so. Uh, we have an interview with Josh Green and Olgun Ulek. Hopefully I said that correctly. He's an ESPN basketball insider uh, out of Australia. And Josh obviously has been with the Australian team trying to get ready for the FIBA World Cup campaign. And in this conversation, obviously his imminent extension came up and he says yes he'd like to stay in dallas long term so not like that's shocking news obviously you got a guy coming off his uh low paying deal he's gonna want to get paid better and probably gonna want to stick around especially with the mavericks looking like they're on an upswing fair enough but if you want quote unquote breaking news there's your breaking josh green news he wants a long-term extension to stay in Dallas for several years. Cool. Let's talk about the player now. Six foot six, 200 pounds. Josh Green has progressed in each of his first three years in the league. Really, his rookie year has, has made people's perspective skew a little bit because his rookie year was the last year of Rick Carlisle, and I think that kind of stunted his development. He really didn't get a lot of playing time. And I think while he could come in every now and then just to show like the burst of energy and the ability to get some hustle plays, he really wasn't given an opportunity to develop, let alone that shaky confidence we've talked about, a chance to build upon that and take that next step. So it's really just been these last two seasons where he's been able to do that. As such, he is only 22 years old still, but as such, it's almost like you have to treat this as like his third year, not his fourth year. So we'll see where he is on that. His, his confidence has really been probably my, my biggest, um, my biggest question mark about him and what I think his ceiling could be for his career. You're talking about 5.8 points per game, two and a half boards, 1.3 assist. Now he does shoot 51.6% from the field. Granted, a lot of his looks are in transition, point-blank dunks, um, plays around the rim. And uh, he also shoots 36.8% from three for his career. So that's actually a, a very strong number. And his effective field goal percentage is 58.4%. Very nice. Last year was a strong campaign for him. A, a very good step forward. Not perfect by any means, but a solid step forward. He averaged 9.1 points per game three rebounds, 1.7 assists, 53.7% from the field, and 40.2% from beyond the arc. That's an effective field goal percentage of 62.6%. And he did that in 25.7 minutes per game. So you saw the role expand, the opportunity expand, and you generally saw him rise to the occasion. Here are some of his career highs. Last year, 29 points versus Utah. He was seven of 11 from the field, three of six from three. Damn, that's solid. His career high in rebounds is 12. Career high in assists is 10. So you see the playmaking ability. Four steals, two blocks. He can bring a solid defensive effort. He can be a disruptor. He's probably at this point now with Dodo and Reggie Bullock gone, he's probably your best backcourt defender on the roster. That's worth worth noting. So what are we looking at with Josh Green? Well, in his career, he has scored 20 plus points six times, uh, including against Denver, Sacramento and Memphis twice. Why do I mention those teams? Because those are good teams. It's not just like he's doing it against your your basement dwellers or your teams who are not trying, not doing anything. He's done it against good competition. You see the ebbs and flows of his confidence, how when he's confident in his own shot, he will knock down threes at a ridiculously good clip. The problem is he doesn't attempt enough of them, which I'll get into. So there's good 
high marks, even on the offensive side. Another solid thing I would say is that he's played in 166 out of 236 potential games in his career. That's 70%, although again, worth, worth noting, he barely played as a rookie. So really his availability has been pretty rock solid. He has just 29 starts. That's a little bit down because I do think when people talk about Josh Green, there is some talk that he could be potentially the third best player on the team. I don't know about that. It's a it's an interesting conversation. It would require certainly another leap forward in development, but I think he can be a, a very good piece for you. So let's run down some of these pros here when talking about Josh Green. As I said earlier, one of the best defenders on your team at the guard position. I, I would think at this point it's pretty much there. And I know, by the way, I mentioned earlier when I said guards, I mentioned Dodo and Reggie Bullock. I know forwards. At that point, I was talking more broadly about defenders on your team, but certainly for the guards, yeah. Uh, he's an athletic and viable 3 and D weapon. Again, shot 40% from the three-point line last year. That's good. He He's an energy, energy-centric player on the defensive end. He has active hands, both in generating steals, both in keeping his hands active in the passing lanes. He disrupts. He will take a lot of difficult assignments, and he will just agitate the hell out of them. That is all very good. I would like to see his three point attempts per game tick up. I want to say, I want to say last year it was like 2.82 attempts per game. So that's too low. 40%. That's, that's solid, but you got to give me more looks than that. You got to be doing that on four, at least double it, four attempts per game. And with this team set up like it is, he should be able to get those looks. It's just he has to have the confidence to take the shot and then knock it down. So great there. He's got great bounce and burst. Solid playmaking ability. Again, he had 10 assists. His career high is 10 assists. And you see times where his hang time allows him to make some just stupid passes. Passes that anybody not named Luka Doncic or I guess now Kyrie Irving on this team, you would say, what the hell are you doing? But he's been showing this and since the second season in Dallas, really the first time he got to play. And you see these moments where he goes up, seems to hang there as if figuring out what he's doing. And then he sees somebody and whips a pass, sometimes even a bounce pass down the baseline to find a shooter in the corner for an open three. That is hellacious stuff. That is great playmaking ability. What he needs to do is find a little bit more um, a little bit more consistency because while he is good at making some plays, I do feel like he can be a little sloppy with turnovers. Again, we'll get to that in the con section. So solid playmaking ability, great three point shooter, a spot up shooting catch and shoot scenarios is what we're talking about here. Uh, he'll get out and transition and, you know, catch and shoot pretty reliable. And of course the very high motor is all very, very good. I would say that if he, for a guy that can get downhill, going downhill and create some plays for others, I'd like to see him look to create for himself a little bit more as well. And I would like to see him have a more consistent confidence in himself. Even if the outside shot's not falling, get to the basket, get to the line, make things happen. You're not going to get a ton of opportunities. I understand in a playmaking sense, you're not just second fiddle, you're third fiddle because you got Luca and Kyrie. I get that. But that is something you can do, and it is something that is valuable to the team if you're able to do it. And especially with your ability to create for others, you need to also be able to uh, create for yourself a little bit. But you need to do so without getting a little sloppy with the ball and having some turnovers or just incorrect reads. I think in general, when looking at Josh Green, when his confidence is up, he is a very good floor spacer. He brings some much-needed secondary playmaking ability for the Mavericks. And that's whether or not he's a starter or a second unit guy. I, the, the effort is always there. I never question the effort. The problem is when the confidence is down and he starts getting passive with his three point shot, he loses all sense of gravity. The defense just starts cheating down, cheating over to help their teammates. And he's not able to do enough to make them pay. I want to see him move without the ball a little better cut to the basket. We've seen him do that at times. I just want to see a little bit more consistency with it. And I want to see him 
be more aggressive because yeah, obviously we know in the Western conference finals run at times he was a deer in the headlights. He'd get the ball in the perimeter and he looked like he wanted nothing to do with it. At other times you've seen where he's been playing with extremely high confidence and it's like, he's a different player. That's great. I understand that he's not always going to be that guy, but if he can be something close to that guy, at least in terms of the aggressiveness and mindset on both ends of the floor, then I think you have yourself a very solid weapon. I think we're at the point now where myself included a lot of Mavericks be moaned and be grudged endlessly about not taking Desmond Bain um, at a TCU. I, I agree. I was right there with it, especially when Josh Green couldn't get on the floor as a rookie and Bain was already torching us. I got it. I understood it. I think I'm at the point now where I'm higher on Green than I am on Bain because I think Green brings a more complete package to the table of what we need. And I, it's, it's a unique situation where his ceiling is higher than a fair number of our younger prospects. However, I also think that his floor is still an okay player. In today's NBA, you really can't be a one side of the floor player. You can't be a guy that's, hey, I'm a good defender, but I'm a subpar three-point shooter and I can't really do anything else offensively that's asked of me. You can't really afford that anymore. So you have to be able to be aggressive, at the very least, get to the line, make them pay, be a, be a rebounder, be something like that. And I do feel like Josh Green, because he has improved every year, because we have seen steps forward in that confidence, I think year three, or maybe it's, and I say again, I know it's technically year four. I'm talking about actually playing. Year three of actually playing, or maybe it's year four. I do think there's going to be a big step forward. I don't know that he's going to be your third best player. I know that's a, a fun conversation some people want to have. I think he's going to be a very serviceable player who can be an X factor for you. And I think an X factor, a good X factor is a damn good thing to have on your team. Doesn't have to be a guy who is going to average 16 points a game and five boards or something like that. Would I love it if Josh Green did that? Of course. I'm, I'm not looking at him like he's going to be uh, Andrew Wiggins uh, for the Warriors when they won their title. I don't, I don't look at him and think he needs to be that. If he is that, hell yes. But I look at him and I say, if you can raise your levels to 12 to 14 points per game and you can keep your three-point percentage about where it is while shooting at a higher higher number of attempts per game, not a higher clip as in percentage, but a higher number of attempts per game while maintaining around 40% from three, Dude, you're doing everything we need. It's great to have that kind of guy that can play 16, 17 points per game in that type of role. I don't know that Josh Green is that. I don't know that he can be that. But he doesn't have to be in order for the Mavericks to be damn, damn successful. And that's what I'm excited about. Let me know, though. Let me know in the comments. Are you, are you high on the potential of Josh Green? I'm kind of backing off this idea of it being a make or break year. I know in my previous video, that kind of became the narrative I started to, to kind of walk the line of. I do think he's a guy that could still step considerably farther, or he might not be too much better than he is right now. But even as he is now, I think is a good serviceable player. The let me know in the comments. Do you agree? Do you see Josh Green, A, as the starter? And B, do you see any possibility he could be your third best player and your team actually as a whole still be a really good team with him being your third best player potentially? That's a loaded question, but let me know. So like the video, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect. And until next time, guys, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace!